property market is getting totally crushed right now. Today, I'm going to talk about what that means for property prices going forwards, why it actually isn't new, it's actually been happening for nearly 12 months, but most people aren't talking about it, and why you might want to get into the property market faster than you first expected. Hello, my name is Nero, and if you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button because I talk about all things related to the Australian property market. House prices on the march as buyers get in before rate cuts. House prices are on the march again as a bumper auction weekend showed there is strong underlying demand for housing, especially in Sydney, Brisbane, Perth and Adelaide. Based on its rolling monthly index, CoreLogic head of research Tim Lawless said capital city house prices we're on track to rise another 0.6% in March. Now that's the average of our capital cities. Some of our capital cities are falling, others are rising way more than 0.6% per month. This would be the second consecutive month of strong house price growth. After values rose 0.6% last month, the fastest rate in five months. So not only are house prices rising, but the rate at which they're growing is actually increasing. Highlighting the depth of demand, Sydney's preliminary auction clearance rate increased to 75.9%. Melbourne auction clearance rates were 69.4%, slightly down from the 72.4% last week, according to CoreLogic. And I've spoken before about how the change in auction clearance rates is a big determinant for property prices. And when you see auction clearance rates increasing in certain markets, the odds are property prices will increase in those markets. But when you see auction clearance rates starting to fall, it generally means then that property prices aren't going to grow very much and more than likely will fall slightly as well. Among the smaller auction markets, Adelaide, Brisbane and Canberra all generated clearance rates above 70%, led by Adelaide at 79%. Those are pretty strong results given such large volumes, Mr. Lawless said. Now, this is just talking about the auction clearance rates. What about properties that sell without going for auction? For example, we were recently looking at a property for a client in Adelaide, and we didn't end up making an offer because there were 80 written offers placed on that property. That's right, eight zero. Now, if you think that's an outlier, I recently looked at a property in Sydney where there were 250 offers made on that property. In Perth, we regularly see 20 to 50 offers made on one single property. In multiple regional markets, we see dozens of offers made on a single property. And yet what's amazing is that most people are totally unaware of how strong the property market is. Most people are still waiting to see if now is the right time to buy. As you can see on the dwelling prices and time to buy index, the light orange line, time to buy a dwelling, is actually sitting at record lows compared to the last 30 years. What happens when that line starts to go back up again? What happens when more people start to realize how strong the property market is? What will it take for that to happen? Many of the richest people in this country are of the opinion that just one interest rate cut will totally turbocharge property prices upwards. It will increase demand. You're gonna have so many more people competing on the limited number of properties we have in Australia. It really is like a property hunger games, but it's not always the person who offers the most that gets the property, it often comes down to terms, and that's where we're able to really negotiate great deals for clients. But the other thing is, if you're an investor and you're trying to work out what the right price is to pay for a property, what are you going to do? Well, you're probably gonna look at some of the free websites out there to see what similar properties sold for. Now that's the first problem, because on these websites, when it says that a property sold on a particular date, that's generally when it's settled or when the real estate agent updated the listing to stay sold. Odds are the property sold two to three months beforehand. And in some of these markets, two to three months could easily mean a price movement of 20 to $30,000. So that's why so many do-it-yourself investors are missing out. But then some of the more advanced investors will use some high-end 
tools where they pay a subscription service to get the computer to work out how much property prices are worth. Yet look how wrong some of these have been. Here's a property that is listed on CoreLogic and CoreLogic said it was valued for $385,000. Now what do you think most investors will do when they see CoreLogic value this property at $385,000? Well, they're gonna try and get it for say $375,000 because they wanna get it under market value. But what did this property actually sell for? Well, there were multiple offers over $465,000 and the property ended up selling for $475,000. That's $90,000 above what CoreLogic said the property was valued at. Or here's another property that CoreLogic said would be worth $385,000. Yet there were over a dozen offers starting at $550,000 and above. This is a live deal right now and the final price has not been confirmed. But what's my point here? So many do-it-yourself investors are constantly missing out despite them doing all the research they possibly can because they're unable to work out what the actual value of a property is. The only way you can do it is by constantly calling up agents, tracking the market and seeing what properties are selling for right now. It's no wonder we have so many clients who have done all sorts of courses out there online and done what those courses have told them to do and all they've found is that they've kept missing out on properties, the market continues to rise and they're falling further and further behind. Don't let this be you. Make sure you're doing your due diligence correctly or getting the right professional help. But what I'm sharing with you isn't new. It's been happening for 12 months or so. Booming suburbs where house prices surged more than 20% in 12 months. House prices surged more than 20% across hundreds of mostly affordable suburbs in Perth, Brisbane, Sydney and Adelaide over the past 12 months defying three interest rate rises, worsening affordability, and the soaring costs of living, data from CoreLogic shows. Eliza Owen, CoreLogic Head of Research, said the affordable segment of the housing market would continue to dominate growth until interest rates were reduced. Here's why this is good news for you as a property investor. What it means is that properties in areas generally priced under a million dollars are doing better from a capital growth perspective, at least from a percentage point of view, than the more expensive properties, which means that if you're someone who has a low risk appetite, you want to just get started with investing in property and look for something that is more affordable, looking at areas where properties are priced anywhere from $600,000 to say up to a million dollars, as long as they meet the other capital growth criteria, are more than likely going to be the better areas for you to buy in and of course the safer ones as well because they're more affordable and there's more demand out there because more people can afford those properties than the more expensive ones. But personally, I think that's even gonna continue even after interest rates do fall. It's no longer a question of if interest rates will fall but rather when and the reason why I think the lower price segments will continue to outperform the mid-range and higher end of town is because the fact is that there is no new supply coming on board. Prices in those areas are too low for builders to be able to go in and build en masse profitably. So that means that the demand will continue to stay well above supply, pushing those areas higher. Plus, you've got rents rising significantly in those areas as well, improving your cash flow over time. That's why if you're thinking about buying an investment property, 2024 gives you some great opportunities to get properties at more affordable price points, which have strong capital growth potential, but also strong rental growth potential as well. It's really an opportunity not to be missed. And if you wanna work out how do you find these areas that give you this great capital growth potential and rental growth as well, check out the link in the description below to get totally for free the digital and audio version of my book. It's a full property investing blueprint based on my now 22 years of investing experience. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.